<laughs> now, that was a wild ride. That was a really cool session. I'm not saying my session isn't cool, but it's a bit calmer. Maybe there's no background music or anything. Um, maybe I should add some like anime soundtrack sounds or something. That would be cool. Uh, but we're going to do with this for now. So uh, before we get started, I want to ask who here identifies to an extent as an anime person in some way? Okay, a few people. Well, then the rest of you, you are in for a good ride to learn more. So that's all right. Uh, so here is the Venn diagram. We have the Kubernetes and the anime there. And the ones who raised your hands, you are perfectly there on the middle with me. So you are in the perfect spot for this. Uh, welcome. Um, and the ones who know something about Kubernetes or tech in general, you're on the other side. So yes, you're gonna, yes, perfect, there's one. So you're definitely gonna be learning more about anime then. If you know anime and you don't know anything about Kubernetes or tech, then obviously you're gonna learn more about that topic. So don't worry. Everyone hopefully learned something new or something, I don't know. But let's go then. Um, who am I? So this is the usual slide that I show in events. But none of that matters, to be honest here. Like, we don't care. We care about the fact that I have watched over 100 Finnish series. Um, and after that, I stopped counting because I was like, it doesn't matter anymore. It's too many to count even. Um, so I am particularly well over my 10,000 hours in to be the master of this topic, I would say. So I'm doing good. Um, so for the agenda today, uh, we have a quick lightning talk on this topic. So we have, first, we're going to see some technical uh, technical details, how that meets with anime, and then we're going to go into 10 life lessons or technological lessons learned from anime in general. So let's get started. So here is the Kubernetes cluster. How many have seen this before? Probably most people or no, yes, okay. Some of them, so there's some Kubernetes folks here. That's good. So this is the Kubernetes cluster, which uh, is compromised. Of, there's the control plane, and then there's the nodes, and then we have the cloud provider API. And the only thing you need to know here is essentially that the control plane controls the node. So it's the mastermind behind the operation. Um, so if we put this into the anime context, how does it look like? How does it then feel like? This is an example of it. So we have, uh, yes, we have Kakahashi there leading the team, and then the little team members are doing exactly as they are told. Hopefully, not always, hopefully. Um, Naruto, Sasuke, and whatnot there. And actually, as a bonus, I put there Hokage as the Kubernetes, the, the cloud a provider API, actually masterminding everything, even from the next level there. Um, but if we look at it from a bit of a different perspective, then we go to the next one. So we have actually even a better example. So we have Japanese task force with L truly masterminding and commandeering everything uh, with the gun holes there on the bottom. But this doesn't always apply in the anime world because if you have an example of One Piece, I would say that the crew members don't do what Luffy says most of the time. Honestly, it's kind of the opposite to be frank. Um, but, you know, it's, it's quite accurate, nevertheless. And then speaking a bit more about uh, Naruto as well, so we can imagine that there's a lot of important skills that people learn in Naruto, and I think one of the most important ones that a ninja learns in, uh, in the Naruto world is the um, uh, cloning technique. So if you're familiar with Kubernetes world, it is pretty much the same as replica sets. Um, replica sets do provide logic for scaling the pot up and down, uh, and they do actually, you know, maintain a, a stable set of replicas. And that is exactly really similar to Naruto. And you're like, oh, I think tech and Kubernetes and anime starts working. You can start seeing the similarities. It's interesting. But that done, that was kind of like the tech side, the um, technical detail side of things. Now we're going to move into life lessons in tech and everything. So. Lesson one, importance of a team. Now, the team is a super important thing in anime. It's always important. Well, the previous images that we saw were also very team-centric. So from One Piece to Naruto to anything, Bleach, anything, everyone works in a team. And it is super important because everyone is stronger together because the team is greater than the sum of its parts. As a sum of its parts, so everyone has a specific role. They work uh, on that role. So in this image, for example, we have people who might be a cook, who might be a swordsman, and whatnot, and they have specific roles that they fulfill. Now, this is obviously true in tech as well. 
Um, if you have a development team, engineering team, everyone has a role in that team. Um, but what if that doesn't quite happen? What if one person has to shoulder too much? Then we get this kind of situation as here it is. If someone actually has all of these skills in the tech world, you are a pretty much a unicorn and a crazy person and an IT team all by yourself already there. Um, but that is definitely something that maybe sometimes gets asked in the tech world. But what about anime equivalent? What is there something that could be similar to this in the anime world? Well, I think it's clear. It's the mecha. So if you just unite all of the team members and become one mecha there with the parts of everyone, uh, Power Ranger style, then you become this, which is the previous image in the anime world. Um, now this is, you know, not maybe exactly possible in the tech world. Like, you know, have a hand of a front developer and a leg of a back end developer, and then you're like the ultimate developer after that. Maybe not applicable all the times, maybe impossible, a bit of a Frankenstein, but nevertheless. Another theme that's really common in anime is mysterious characters with dark past. So Satsuka here is a great example. There's usually always one of them. They don't usually say much. They almost never smile, and he has a pout face there on as well. Um, they are kind of hardened thanks to their usually tragic past. Uh, but they also have a lot to contribute to the theme because of the hardships that they have gone through, and they have learned a lot through that hardship. But they are a bit moody, and they do kind of their own thing. So who might that be in the tech team? I would say that, for example, mainframe coders are probably the people uh, with, with the dark past, the hardened past, and now, but they still have a lot of cool things to contribute there. Um, then, to be honest, there's another side that's very important in anime, so self-development. So usually the trope is, for you uh, that don't watch too much anime, is that uh, to defeat a villain that's a bit above your bay grade, you know, a bit higher in skill level. You usually have to go to a cave, time machine, one of these things to skill up, and then you go there and then magically you get stronger and so forth. Um, uh, so we can think about what is the equivalent in the tech world. Well, how about buying a ticket to NDC Copenhagen, the developer fest. You go into the cave, yeah. <laughs> you go into the cave, you learn new skills, you emerge leveled up, you emerge with new skills, you emerge with new talents, and so forth. So that's actually quite uh, equivalent. And even more so, when you, when anime um, heroes emerge from their caves, they usually come up with new outfits, to be honest. They also have something new, or new hair colors as well. Um, and isn't that the same in the tech world as well? We go to a conference, we get a t-shirt, we get a swag, we get bag, and isn't that just a physical representation of the skills that we have learned? Exactly the same as in the anime world. So yeah, there's a lot of parallels there for sure. Um, another important thing I think to remember throughout all tech careers and careers in general is to, to take time, some time to relax. Um, so this is uh, from a beach episode in anime, which is a concept where um, usually the heroes need some time off, you know, they might be saving the world, but you know, they need to go to the beach, they need to play some volleyball, of course, or run some errands. Um, and they are just about in every anime out there. Um, and to be honest, that is important to remember, so take your time off. You know, we might feel that the world is burning when, you know, we have to do work and the sprint is coming close and whatnot, but it's important to relax and calm down. And I think actually the beach episodes are usually filler uh, episodes as well when the anime needs to, you know, spend some time waiting for the manga to get a bit further away. Actually, that's pretty close to beach or freezes. So you need to catch some time to wait for technical depth to be paid off. So there's a lot of similarities there as well. Um, and now after you've taken your break, you are back to work. Um, what do you need to always then to remember? You need to be prepared. You need to be ready for anything or any danger that comes to you. Now in anime world, this means that you're ready to jump out of the window, to save your friends, to go somewhere at a moment's notice. And this happens very often, by the way. It is a very common method of leaving the room. Um, and then to be honest, I think this is also a really good example of, of, you know, it's important to set up good monitoring and visibility and alerts to all of your um, development environments and so forth. But it's also super important to take action as our heroes there are in this little clip here. 
because it's not enough just to receive the alert. It's you have to actually take the step of that action and jump out of the window and go for it. Then uh, the next lesson is importance of documentation in general. Um, so you need to let your teammates to know what you're doing and the historical context for it. So in anime, what they do, what could be better than do it? Just yell out your moves out loud. It is very common and you just go for it. You yell them out as loud as you want and as loud as you can. It is a bit ridiculous in anime that they do that in front of the villain so the villains can hear exactly what's your next move. That's a bit silly. But luckily there are no villains in your engineering team rooms so no one can hear when you yell and you move out loud. Um, so there's no reason not to do uh, documentation really well. You know, at least everyone will definitely know what you're doing if you start yelling out loud, you know, kubectl this or kubectl that. So it's definitely going to be on, on top of you. Um, perfect. Another thing that I think that's unifying these both scenes is enduring and long fights. So uh, sprints take a lot of time. It's not, uh, there's always, you know, a new feature to release. There's always a new customer to make happy and so forth. So there's a lot of things that you have to do. And when you're preparing them for those fights, you might have attended this event, for example, you know, bursting with ideas. Oh, I want to try this framework. I want to try this project, that project, and that one there, and so forth. And then you, you know, have so many ideas to try and deploy, and you go for it. Um, but you have to be a bit careful because you don't want to end up in a situation where you become a bit over complex, aka you will then become the monster that you despise. Uh, which is uh, another uh, common theme in anime, which is, you know, if the complexity in the tech world, if the complexity gets too high, you have many, too many things happening. For example, multiple service meshes in your Kubernetes cluster and whatnot, then you might end up actually over-engineering everything to a place where the projects and all the tools are no longer helping you, which is really similar to anime where, for example, here, uh, Ichigo becomes the monster that he was actually trying to defeat the Bear Fish. And now, then talking about Kubernetes world in general, um, as well as anime world, I think there's another thing that really unites both of the um, uh, worlds, and that is ridiculous power scaling. So we have, it's over 9,000 here, uh, which is very common in the Kubernetes world. You always scale, and that's the basic principle of everything, essentially, and you always aim for that. Um, one lesson and one uh, bonus lesson, by the well, the 11th left, but important here, always have a snack at hand. So we have Luffy here demonstrating why is it important always to be uh, full of energy, to have good food, and at least I get very hangry and hungry very fast. So it's always good to have a snack at hand, um, also when you're developing uh, whatnot. But then the most important lesson comes here, uh, believe in yourself. And I think that's across all storytelling, across all anime, you have to believe in yourself and believe in your ability to take it to your next level. But if that fails, Anima gives you a really easy answer what to do next. Just start smashing, become yellow, and uh, go Super Saiyan. Really easy solution. Magically, next episode, all of your problems will be fixed because you're just stronger than anyone else. And obviously, just you know, become more, more, more hair, more training and everything, and it's all gonna be better. Now, if it all comes happens that you train too much, you become too Super Saiyan, you know, you go over the top, don't worry, um, you might lose your hair, but um, you will become the most powerful being in the universe as this guy here is. He trained so hard that he lost his hair. But nevertheless, believe in yourself, it's all fine. Thank you, everyone.